itself, Mark Allen Chair. Hold on, Mark. I have to press. Oh, you have to start recording. No problem. Yep, you're all set now. Go ahead. Okay, thank you, Sabrina. Um, we're going to move forward. We're going to start the uh, roll call. Uh, you have myself, Mark Allen, the chair. If uh, you could just go. Uh, in. Janet Evelyn, voting member. Dean Roberts, voting member. Melissa Matuska, voting member. Bob Abriola, voting member. Matthew O'Callaghan, voting member. Okay. Um, okay, we'll see if anybody else uh, joins as we get going here. Um, speaking of uh, roll call, uh, Sabrina, have you, sp have you spoken to Helen? Uh, have you heard from Helen in a while? I have not. Okay. I'll try reaching out to her. I haven't spoken to her since before the holidays. Um, okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, did everybody have a chance to, um, well, moving forward, uh, do, do, do we have anybody from the public uh, on the line uh, ready to speak to our Commission? Jason Milligan's here, but Mark, do you want him to speak now or do you just want him to speak when the item's up on the agenda? I don't mind. I don't mind doing it when the item's on the agenda. You know, I okay. know that some of the other commissions start with the public and then we'll then move on with the rest of the meeting. I don't mind doing it in context if we're cool with that. No. So, Jason, do you want to wait or do you want to talk now? No, I, I'll... Stay in here, and when you're ready for me, I'll I'll talk. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, did everybody have a chance to review the minutes of the December first meeting? Does anybody uh, need to take a few minutes to review it? And does anybody have any changes uh, that they want to recommend for those minutes? Mark, I need a minute. I wanted to just go through it more time. Sure. Thank you. Sabrina, do you want to, can you put that up on the screen? Yeah, give me one sec. Sure. I'm good, Mark. Okay. Okay, did anybody else have any questions or points points about the uh, minutes as noted? Uh, looks, looks fine to me. Okay, do we have a motion to accept the minutes as presented here? I'll do a motion to accept. Do we have a second? Thank you. Kadeem, thank you very much. Can we get a accept the minutes uh, a vote by name? Starting with myself, a yay, Mark Allen, chair. Melissa Matuska, yes. Kadeem Roberts, aye. Bob Abriola, sorry, Bob Abriola, aye. Do I need to still vote if I made the motion? Um, no. Um, so, um, are, are there any nays? 
Any abstentions? Uh, I abstain. I wasn't here last meeting. Okay, fair enough. Um, do we? How many? How many eyes is that, Sabrina? I think it was five. five. Sorry. Five. Yep. Right. So that that's a quorum for us, right? Correct. Yep. Okay. So the motion carries. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to go back to the agenda here for a second. Oh my. Okay. Um, moving on to the committee staff updates. Um, I don't believe we have Nori here. I can give a short update though, Mark, if you want me to. Please, thank you very much. Sure, so um, no real updates and expenditures on our current budget. The only thing that's getting pulled out of there is Telesco's minutes and the payments for Michelle. Um, on our tw FY22 budget, that budget package was just sent out uh, to get its first round of review. We're having the planning commission review it um, next week. Um, so next meeting, I should have an update on how that meeting went. Following that, it goes to the mayor, to BET, to council members. Um, so we'll get kind of more a more solid picture of what we hope to get approved and what's not going to get approved going forward. Um, but like I said, at the last meeting, our rollovers are in effect. So our accounts are in good standing as of right now to cover all of our bills and any projects that we have coming up um, in the springtime. Um, and that's about it. Okay, in that case, what I'd like to do is recommend. Um, so, Bob, you're, if, I don't know if you remember back, but we had basically that the budget committee is going to be comprised of the chair, the vice chair, and the treasurer, and to meet with Sabrina to review the budget for the year ahead. We can't decide on how we're spending the money. We can come up with proposals, but ultimately that comes back to the commission. Right. For, you know, to discuss and agree. Oh, uh, I'd like to propose that we have a, we set up a meeting for January. Uh, I'll speak to Nori, find out your availability hers. Yep. And, to work it out with Sabrina so that we can meet, uh, probably not in person, but at least by Zoom. Yep. And sort of get That's down the more details of the, uh, of the budget and then to look at how we're gonna, some things that we want to uh, do in the year ahead. So for everybody else that's here, uh, definitely any ideas that you guys have individually for you know, new projects, definitely you know, don't, don't hesitate. Just, just because we're meeting as a budget committee doesn't mean you can't send us your ideas. And obviously with anything that we come up with, we're gonna bring back to you guys to agree on and discuss. Um, okay, uh, communications update. Um, Michelle, are you here, correct? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, so Michelle, uh, continuing to do a great job. Uh, I think the stuff throughout the holidays, I noticed, uh, I noticed all of our social posts are really, were good. Uh, Michelle, do, do you have any words for us about uh, the work you've been doing in general? Um, not a lot. I mean, just the usual. If anyone knows of anything at all, please pass it around. Um, events are definitely starting to pick up after the holidays, which is good. Um, so yeah, that's about it. And I know we might discuss some new initiatives for social media. So I look forward to that. Okay, so I'm going to be uh, I talked to Matt about um, starting to organize a newsletter from the Arts Commission. And um, Matt, I'll, I'll reach out to you offline. And uh, we should, I definitely want to get that together for this week, if not early next week. So since it's the first month of the year, fresh start for the year, definitely want to get a newsletter out there. And, yeah. uh, but other members, if you have anything that you want to specifically, you know, bring out in a newsletter, any ideas that you have, again, please, you know, send us your ideas. And, uh, you know, we're going to do it through, as the communications committee, but it's a relatively small committee at this point. So uh, any help that you guys can provide, any, any thoughts, totally welcome. Um, <clears throat> Emerson, uh, I don't believe is here today. Is that correct? He's not on. Okay. Um, 
Bob, do you want to do you want to pick up the slack for Emerson as far as like needing an infrastructure committee update as far as like recounting your last meeting and then we could turn it over to Jennifer MLK update. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I, we had a meeting, I think it was last week, right, Mark? <clears throat> um, we we were going through the, um, you know, the guidelines and the policies for for the for the commission. Um, and we we talked a little bit about some of the projects going going on. Um, you know, one in particular, the banner project that was down on Washington Street, as you guys know, we had over the, the summertime that's been taken down. And we have a new um, new banners going up shortly. I think those will be going up this week. So it was another topic we we discussed. Um, I think he's having these meetings every two weeks, Mark, now. I think the uh, infrastructure meetings will be every two weeks. No, it's really not a set schedule that it's every week or every two weeks. I know you were concerned about the schedule in general. Um, it's, on a, it's on an as-needed basis. Yeah. And I think just being, being that's the beginning of the year, we also have the you know reorganization of the committees with Emerson and some new projects that, you know, we're not really just sort of getting everything lined up. Yep. But, yeah, and then, uh, yeah, yeah, the ML, the MLK project obviously is a big, big one. And I that's really Janet's lead. So I would rather have her speak to what's going on on, on those efforts for the infrastructure. Great. Uh, Janet, would you like to uh, speak to us about the MLK project? Sure. Um, so, um, yeah, so basically where we are with the project is um, we had moved to create um, a list of um, a document that was shared with the commission. Um, I believe um, it was shared with the entire commission on the last commission meeting. Uh, of um, and uh, there were a number of different potential locations that were included um, that were comprised of both public and privately owned um, potential locations within the Martin Luther King uh, corridor uh, with the group. Uh, then uh, we um, the then the we we reviewed it with the infrastructure committee and. Um, based on um, a, a revised presentation that uh, Julio did, and his name is P-R-A-D-O, by, by the way, I think in the minutes you have it as Prada, but it's Prado. Um, so we narrowed it down the presentation to um, what were public spaces versus privately owned spaces, as we thought that these would be better um, the, the, the publicly owned spaces would be um, easier to navigate in terms of um, in terms of getting an art installation done. And so that was sent to Sabrina and currently we're just waiting to hear back. Um, I know uh, Sabrina was supposed to help us with some input with regards to whether or not uh, to, to vet the, there were three locations that we identified that would potentially be good areas for the project, for an art installation project. And uh, we were just waiting to hear back from Sabrina on um, whether those are publicly owned spaces by the city and um, you know if, if they would be, a, and then I think uh, the, the commission will move to vote again on that. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong there, Mark. And then from there, we were going to uh, engage or find a way to engage the community to um, uh, make them aware of this project, what we're doing, and, and seek their feedback and input with regards to um, the locations and ideas around themes that I think Julio um, is going to be working on as well. Um, I don't think that we. Sabrina, I mean, were we thinking that we needed to vote on those locations, uh, or was that more like that's more the based on we're basing our off the overall recommendation from the committee? I, th I think um, we need to formulate the plan about what's going to go where first before it comes here, because I need to also take it to Parks and Rec. Right, if and that goes to Parks and Rec location, right? Um, if it's a DPW 
facility or in the public right of way, I have to go to DPW, not Parks and Rec. So if it's the stairs, for example, I'd have to go to DPW. Okay, that makes sense. Right, so we want to line that stuff up before before we- Yeah, so I forwarded Julio before the holidays, the list that DPW responded with of what's public, what's private, and what they're still looking into. Um, he has that now to make the further suggestions. And then from there, we can, like, we don't have to fully render, but just give them an idea of what's going on. Um, especially if we're to do the stairs, that one's a little bit more complicated than other things. Um, so just exactly what we're doing so that I could present, you know, first to staff um, and then the, to the committees holistically instead of bringing one piece by one piece as it goes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this, Sabrina. Um, do we, is there something we need to deal with um, as a process in terms of the city paying for art on that's on private property, like some sort of agreement with the property owner that they're going to maintain this art for a certain period of time. Most likely, yes, since we're commissioning it. Right, and then- uh, Apprised of the project, they've just been swamped and haven't really gotten back to me. Um, but I reached out to them as soon as I got back on Monday. So I should hear something this week. So do you think that there is sort of a, either within Common Council or DPW or even within our commission, is there, is there you think a preference for public property over private property? For it being our first time doing something like this, public is gonna be the easiest. And I think for our first stab, we should go with the easy route, not the hard one, <laughs> um, just to see kind of what we can do quickly, especially because this is our first time the planning piece of it's going to take a little bit more since we're doing the our first stab at all of this so once we have that all laid out i think we can do more complicated stuff where it's on private property or if it's on state property those types of things but i think for our first stab we should try to stick to public as much as possible so so janet you might want to consider that when you just next speak to julio again as far as like choosing i don't remember all the three places but um, any that are on private property might 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 want to be your extra places to consider. Maybe you can come up with three public options, uh, you know, for your for your first choices. Yeah, I think the the initial um, the revised presentation that was shared um, with Sabrina did have our very our first three spaces. Um, and again, um, I'll, uh, if if if. Sabrina did get back to Julio on whether those are public or private. Those would be the ones we would want to yeah. want to do, and I, uh, they were excellent locations, and they represented, as I mentioned in the infrastructure call, um, you know, they were they represented various parts of the Martin Luther King corridor. One was at the lower end of the corridor, which was the Nathaniel Eli School wall, building wall. Then there was another location, which was just a blank wall um, right in the area, right where uh, South Main and Wilson intersects. Um, that I think would be a great wall because that would have been a wall that would be seated for like graffiti, you know, and things like that. So I think an art piece there would be great. And then of course the stairs, which um, I think represents an amazing um, opportunity for, for public art. Mm -hmm. I sent the uh, email with some stair artwork as well. I think you guys got that right. So I agree, Janet, those were three very good locations. Um, right. The wall is probably the one that we're uncertain of if that's uh, city owned or not, but we'll see. Yeah, they're looking into that one more specifically from a lot line and map perspective. Um, so I'll hear back from them soon on that. And then I did start the conversations with DPW about the stairs, specifically with Mike Yosak, since it was their project um, when he was still part of that team. And their biggest concern was um, making sure the paint is slip resistant, uh, which makes sense, obviously. <laughs> that is a very, very big concern because um, I did break my foot slipping on paint in Manhattan some years ago, so. Um, yeah, so their biggest concern was um, slip resistance and then maintenance, obviously, and then also 
because the stairs are heated, we just need to make sure the paint won't come up because of the heat when, once it's heated. Um, so just keeping those things in mind, but I have already started kind of flagging that for them so that they know that's something we're thinking about because, you know, the murals on the walls are one thing that we own, but then, you know, when you're talking about places where people actually walk on it, it just has a, a little bit more tentacles attached to it, so. <laughs> I think they make like a clear that has like a sand in it, like a grit on it that might be able to be used. I have to do a little more research. But there's pro I think there's product that has like it's a non skid type of paint for surfaces, ground surfaces that might be you know, Julio can kind of research all that. Yeah, yeah and I'm he, sure he was to get on the call and it looks like he didn't get the link. I'm going to forward it to him now. Okay, and Nori just joined as well. She was running late. She texted me before, so she's on now. So we can, uh, Nori, if you want to unmute, you can uh, get your name in the record as attending. Okay, Nori Gruden, attending. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, when we finish the infrastructure, uh, we can update Nori on the uh, on what we discussed with the budget committee. But um, was there anything else as far as MLK? Um, uh, not that I have, but. Um... I've just sent the link to Julio. So if he joins, we might want to, um, you know, if we get a moment to invite him to, to brief us as well. Okay. Yeah. So this is more of an infrastructure thing. Uh, Bob, can you update everybody on what's happening with the traffic boxes, the, the recent issue that happened so everybody is aware? Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, so there was a traffic box on the post road. Um, I don't recall the cross street, but the St. Philip's Artist Guild did that box two years ago. And Tony Mobilia, who recently passed away, he was the leader for SPAG on these traffic boxes. Um, so his wife, Dorothy, had seen that, um, I guess the, the, it was the city or who, probably the city, right, Mark? It would have been the city. No, that they commissioned it because it was yeah. technology. Yeah, so there was some kind of a, a technology issue with the box. So they replaced the box. Um, they're removing all the interior uh, guts of it, and then they're giving the box um, back, which, which Dorothy's happy about. So we're trying to find a new location for the box, and we had a few options. Um, one would be at the SPAG, the St. Philip's Artist Guild Mansion. Um, and Mark, you had a few thoughts maybe at the art park at Isaac Isaac Square that that could be a location actually we have Jason on the line today we can ask for his input on that and then um, we also talked about the uh, that park across from the uh, the spaghetti strand but I think uh, Samantha you said that's reserved for another installation at some point yeah we have um, there were some thoughts about what will go in the vine park on a more long-term basis so okay is that what we call that, the Vine Park? Like, what's that park called? It's actually, it's got a name and I always forget. It's the, um, it was named for uh, a gentleman whose name escapes me now. I'm sorry, I don't remember. It's, it's got a name though, they are yep. dark. Yeah, not a problem. So, so there's a new box there. And, I, and at some point we, we talked about having a tribute to Tony Mobilia, Mobilia box um, done. And uh, you know, Spag would certainly want would be honored to do that. So that that's the idea, to replace that box um, with one for Tony. And then the, you know, the good news. Hopefully, they didn't damage the old one, but we'll get it back and we'll get it displayed somewhere. Right. Well, I was saying in the email that I sent around, from the public's point of view, there's no difference between a working box and a non-working box. Sure. Know, sure. Art, that, that's a question. Bob or Mark, was was anybody notified when this happened or you just? No, no, Dorothy, that, that was actually what she got upset about because nobody let us know. Uh, Spag didn't know and I didn't, you know, Mark didn't know either. I let him know. So that just happened. David Shockley heads that program up. He wasn't even aware. So I let him know about the box and then he did the further research and there was some kind of a malfunction going on. So I would imagine those guys have to work very quickly to switch that out so yeah. it just it, it, i don't think there was negligence and communication they probably just had to move pretty quickly to do it um you said on what's the what's the street you said a post and what else it's right at the corner at the bottom of 
what is North Avenue that turns into Westport Avenue, right there where it crosses Main by that, is that uh, global station. It's in that traffic island that's right in the middle of the road where Main yeah. splits. A, that's the one with the cute little cars and the guy right, yeah, on the yeah. pony. That's okay. the one. Yeah, that that was like a tribute to the, you know, the, the Pony Express, like the mail route was through there. So Tony came up with that, you know, with the idea for that one. I did... Here's an interesting thing, which is that we didn't even know that DPW had in their possession another older traffic box that had been decommissioned that has artwork on it that I've never seen before. Yeah. And I'm not around Norwalk forever, but this is going back at least more than five years. So who knows when that got decommissioned? We didn't even know that it existed. I don't even know who the artist is yet. But we're going to get that box able to play that. So we're going to find a home for both of these things. Wouldn't it be great? Like, I mean, I don't know how often a box gets decommissioned, but if they're ones that have artwork on it and they're in good condition, wouldn't it be great to have a location for these? For sure. Absolutely. You know, I did speak with Father Sudir and he was um, open to the idea of putting the box on the mansion property. So that is an option for, for Tony's box. But if we come up with a better location where more people can see that, because my concern would be it would be behind the mansion. And unless you're there behind, you're not going to see it, right? Yeah. I'm sure Dorothy, Dorothy would be okay with that, but would love to find a location to put these boxes. Right on. So Will it confuse the people who work on the boxes, like with electrical stuff, if it's out somewhere, they, that they're not going to try to mess with it? That's what I'm, you know, uh, Look, I would think. Uh, anytime a box is out there, it could be open game for, you know, graffiti vandal, I guess. Because I was wondering where you have the, well, now it's Christmas stuff up, but like where those, um, where the restaurants are, where the banner, those cement blocks or even the park for now like leave it out for a few months and then bring it to the mansion this way people can have people can see it out and then say it's going to be um by the ch at the church i'd rather you know the weather's getting nice when people start walking around if it's somewhere downtown to see it but I mean, make, you know these boxes have to be installed they're pretty heavy mm -hmm. they're iron and they're like they get it they get installed with a cement block i don't think that temporary location is going to be problematic i mean I, I like your idea though in general but i think the one you're talking about though with the two cars and the horse on it needs to stay on post road somewhere though because of its reference but the other meeting we had where they talked about the whale needing to be covered up or one of them because i think we're doing a tribute, and I can't remember to whom it is, but that we're doing a tribute to someone on one of the boxes over on West Ave. And when I went to go look to see which one it was, there's actually two that should be replaced over in that area. Um, one is completely faded, and then the whale one, the whale one's halfway faded. So like only portion of it is colored. So those are two locations, but that pony one though, I think should stay in on post road somewhere uh yeah so I, I suggested that if they got installed on a sidewalk that like from the public's point of view it doesn't make a difference whether it's working or non-working um but you know apparently the installing it on the sidewalk in itself it is problematic as we've as we've seen um it, it might be useful if we could have some images of of all of them, so we can, you know, um, maybe have a reference. Yeah. Of what they look like. I, I don't know um, if some one of us or if maybe uh, Michelle. I can I can call up the the Tony box. I have that one. Yeah. So for sure. Now to Melissa's point, the uh, the other two boxes on West Avenue have definitely been noted. Um, there's one of them that's directly across from the Sono Mall. And I had spoken to JP from the Sono Mall that they're possibly interested in sponsoring a box um, in conjunction with the mall. Maybe they would even pay for it. That would lift some of the burden of David Chopley having to go find the money for it. So that's something to consider. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, we basically paint these boxes as based on David Chopley, you know, allocating the money through his sources and, uh, and then on an as-needed basis. 
So who's yeah. the host? You, Mark, if you just you want to disable, and I can show at least the one box if you guys want. Uh, sure. That's Sabrina. If you Somebody, could. somebody's, yeah. All right. Let's see. That's the box. Can you guys see? Mm -hmm. And where is this one? This, this one is on the Post Road, right where Post Road crosses Main Avenue, Main Street. Sorry. Yeah, it was a, it was a tribute to, you could see like the mail, you know, got like the pony. Mm -hmm. So was that one recently changed? Because wasn't that one, didn't that one have a different um, design on it? This is about two years, maybe two years, I'd say. Yeah, we did okay. this two years ago and it was a blank box. There was no graphics on it. Okay. Yeah. And this is the box that's, that's now replaced with a, a plain box that's going, going to be available to paint. So that's what we were discussing a potential uh, tribute to Tony on there. Uh, for the future, but now we have to, to find a new home for this particular box. Yep. All right, there okay. you go. That's that box. And Bob, do you have that uh, email with that other box? I do. Right, give me that. Really cool. I was an eight one. All right, well, you're gonna have to give me a minute to get going. All right, right no problem. So uh, I, I just want to recognize that uh, Nor uh, Brian Casper and Emerson Strinidi have now joined us. You guys could just say hello for the to get your name in the role. That would be great. Emerson, hey guys, voting member. Brian. Brian Casper, voting member. Thank you very much. And the chair recognizes Julio Pardo has just joined us. And thank you. Present. Um. So Bob's get Bob can look for that artwork. Julio, did you uh, just? We're in infrastructure update at the moment. Janet has uh, given us an update on MLK. Um, did you have anything new that you needed to uh, inform us about other than, you know? Um, no, I think the, the two recommendations are the, the stairs on MLK and uh, the Nathaniel Eli School uh, are two locations. So that's what I would recommend. Um, so as far as next step, obviously there's a community component um, and obviously with COVID, that's, that's going to be very difficult. One thought that I had was a, a Earth Day event, clean up, uh, get together, and it could be Arts Commission people. Uh, and uh, we do a cleanup along MLK and then just kind of uh, put it out to the community. Hey, come out, you know, meet the, meet the Arts Commission. You know, we're interested in, in meeting the community. Uh, we're going to be out here cleaning up on... Uh, well, Earth Day is uh, 422, I believe, which is midweek, but uh, it could be April 18th, I think, is, would be a good date. Um, and as a way to kind of engage the community right there. Well, Norwalk often does an Earth Day cleanup, and that's usually citywide. Uh, this is that new other box, so you guys can check that out. Um, the, uh, the Earth Day is usually run through. Uh, David Shockley used to do it. I don't know, but it, it's usually yeah. run through City Hall. We could definitely do an Arts Commission version on MLK. That's totally viable. Yeah, I think there's there's all over the city. So yeah, the resources are there. And if we just kind of you know make it like to say, hey, we're we want to come out and 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 meet the community. If come out, we're going to be out here cleaning up, mm -hmm. kind of thing. I mean, there's going to be other stuff going on. Uh, I know there's there's a beach cleanup. There's a couple beach cleanups, so. Right, yeah. So I can connect you with the uh, David Shockley on that. Um, so this is the Dubion Montoya, this box. This is the first time I really saw this box. Did you, you guys remember this from any time? I don't, I don't where was this, Mark? I, I have no idea. Well, I have no idea. It's been with DPW for probably a couple of years at least. Yeah, Duvia. So Duvia, he was the originator or the, one of the original first artists at St. Phillips. Oh, oh, I know. Uh, he, he did, he's done a few of the murals down at the, um, the Sono collection. So he's a, you know, he's, he's been a fairly established artist in the area here. I'm glad that this was saved. I had yeah. no idea. Yeah, this is, this is nice. I like it. 
I don't know what the inspired by hundred years of solitude. That's interesting. I don't know what that is, but um, that's a book by a Colombian writer, Marquez. Oh, right on. So it's inspired by it's it's inspired by a book. So and Macondo gonna... is like a like a kind of like a mythical city, right? In the middle of the jungle, like this civilization was sp sprung up in the middle of a jungle and they call it a Macondo. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, that's great. You gotta find a home for this now. Yeah. I'd, mm -hmm. I'd love to have a, a place where we can put these, Mark. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because I would imagine there's more that'll just continue to get decommissioned mm -hmm. or if there's any failures on them. Yeah. Okay, anybody have any ideas on that? Shoot them over by email and let's, let's talk it over. Okay, we're gonna move on. Um, Julio, before we move on, just one th the only thing that you missed was that we were discussing the differences between the challenges of installing MLK artwork on private property versus public property. So you could talk to Janet offline and hear, hear our thoughts on that and uh, the recommendations there. The stairs, the stairs are, are public property. Right, the only thing that may be, a, it, yeah, it's public property. So we would have to engage with DPW, but where it's private, we may have some issues as far as like engaging with the property owners and so on and so forth. So just, just things to consider. So. Uh, no. Okay. The third, the third location is, um, we, you know, we're still vetting, and that is that wall um, on South Main and Wilson Julio, which, um, you know, those were the top three recommendations, and hopefully, you know, that will be a part of the public um, ownership as well that we could also include in the art in the installation, but. Short of that, I think that the stairs and the Eli school will be a great start. Okay, yeah. Hey, Julio, I wanted to mention that um, I was driving on MLK. There's actually a second stairway over there, kind of near the train station that goes to the uh, parking garage, I guess, maybe. Um, might be interesting to do both of them, if possible, especially if it's city-owned property and you get the approval for them. So just yeah. want to mention it. Yeah, no, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, the only thing with that one is that there's they're older and they're kind of beat up. They're like cracks and stuff. So my thought is, you know, if they're going to redo them, then I wouldn't want the artwork to be on there. But maybe that's a conversation uh, with the city to say, hey, you know, we'd love to do both of these. Uh, you know, what's your plan for this set of stairs? But yeah, I, I noticed that one. But the ones, the other ones, uh, the ones that I recommended were recently just redone and there's you know, lighting and stuff on it. So it just was a little, you know, cleaner and nicer. But I, I agree. I think both would be amazing. Okay, thank you very much. We're gonna we're gonna move forward here to new business. Um, so we're gonna be considering uh, what is essentially a public art for a building in downtown Norwalk. Um, Sabrina, can you preface this as, as far as like? what the Arts Commission is is discussing and what we need to agree on and so forth. Sure, so let me also bring Jason in. Uh, but, but the preface of this is in the zoning code, um, developers who wish to develop in the central business district are able to get additional height based on installing a public art amenity. So obviously the Arts Commission is not tasked with whether they deserve the extra height or not. That's the, the mission and goals of the Redevelopment Agency and the Zoning Commission. But we are supposed to endorse or not endorse the art. So if we endo endorse the art as art and deem it suitable, then it can go to zoning and they can determine if the floor height is acceptable with what they've proposed, the developers proposed. If we deny it, it doesn't mean that they don't get the extra floor either. The zoning commission would then just need to have a majority, super majority vote on the art to get the extra story. Um, well, just the extra height really, but it's an extra story. Um, so really our position here is just to determine if it's art and if we like it kind of <laughs> to give our recommendation and support to the, or not support to the zoning commission. So uh, 
Um, Jason, can you introduce yourself and tell people who you are and about this building and where it's located and so forth and what you propose? Absolutely. Any way you can uh, allow my video? I can. Hold on. I'd have to stop sharing. You should be able to if you have a camera. I don't. You're promoted to a panelist right now, so. Oh, so is it showing me? No, I don't know why. Oh, maybe it's because the way. Um, let me see if I can. Let me see. Can you do it now? Ask. I can ask you to start it. We can see you now, but you're muted. Uh, can you hear me now? Yep. <laughs> so yeah, good evening commissioners. Thank you for allowing me on the agenda and thank you for doing what you do. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of the arts commission and I am often referring artists that, that um, reach out to me to reach out to you folks because um, you are a little more organized than, than me. I, I think many of you might know that I have commissioned quite a few public pieces of art. In fact, it's over 75 at this point. Uh, I started with buildings, some of which uh, caused some trouble. And I thank you for bringing credibility to the movement that uh, helped to get where we are. Uh, the art park is another piece which started with some shipping containers and that I put that out there just to, to see what the interest I would get from artists. And I was floored on the uh, local interest and how many amazing local artists there are, which led me to create um, some of those public, I mean, I, they're kind of uh, just boards that it's an outdoor gallery. If you have, hopefully most of you have been by there, but, uh, and I, I put three up at first and I sort of just said the ideas, please. And I got like 25 requests in, in 12 hours. And um, then I sort of had to put a little more thought into how, how I was gonna do this, right? And I, I'm, I'm not super artistic and I hadn't, I hadn't thought that much about it, but it sort of got organized, some themes started to emerge and then we put up a bunch more of them. Then we did a community board, which was supposed to be sort of smaller pieces that would give people an opportunity. Everyone calls and says, or reaches out and says they wanna paint a, you know, a, a, a billboard size. Uh, we don't have those, but I, I think the more places we can put public art, the better. And I, I appreciate the the upkeep factor. I'm glad that you guys are, are thinking about that because um, one of the artists that painted the ship at the edge of Donovan's reached out to me recently. He told me he point, painted that 43 or 44 years ago, which wow. is the year I was born. And he's like, yeah, it might be up time for, for a <laughs> refresh. Uh, but I thought that was cool. And I, I got to tell you, I have met so many artists because of this and uh, I love it. And I, I have some other suggestions, some ideas, you know, not that many people know how talented Norwalk is, right? Like in aggregate and, or how many different places there are. I, I've been the facilitator of introducing a number of artists, which has been a joy uh, that, and they've, you know, they're much more creative than me. They've been able to collaborate and do great things together. Uh, and I, I was hoping that the arts commission would consider some sort of ability to to bring more people together or at least list them i mean how many collaborative art places are there there's the mad lab there's spag there's that one on muller park there's a new one going on west avenue there's there's one in in south norwalk and then the galleries you know it would be fun if there was a list of local art establishments or or professional artists you know or a website it'd be nice if there was a website that included all of the public art in norwalk and maybe some suggested walking tours because it is kind of spread out. But anyway, just ideas. I'm sure that you have more ideas than you can implement, but uh, Norwalk is sort of getting known for the arts and cultural area. And it's, it's, uh, it's fun. Thanks for, the, for doing that. Anyway, so uh, I am a real estate broker. I own quite a few properties uh, in the Wall Street area. And I have a passion for that area. I, I'm in love with it. I, I as you can see, it's by, maybe the whole thing doesn't show up, but I, I recently painted uh, a storefront I'm redoing. I, I'm putting new glass and, and new metal 
and I uh, have it boarded up. So I, I personally painted the I Love Wall Street uh, <laughs> thing behind me. I don't know if any of you got a chance to see it. That's your uh, work? That, that is my handiwork. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's, that's as good as it gets, Robert. <laughs> hey, it's so, all about heart. Yeah, well, and it's temporary. So I didn't want to do anything crazy, right? Uh, I actually had that paint. I had a bottle, of, a can of spray paint, and I had the uh, white, plenty of white. So um, that's what we get. That, that's going to come down, and I've, I've got glass that's going to come up. I just got the permit okay recently, and I'll be... Um, They'll look much better than what it did. The, the glass was all broken behind there. Um, so the place that I'm requesting the public art amenity bonus is at the David Harvey Jewelry building. Um, I want to put as much public art in as many places as I can. And most of the time, there's no benefit other than just the beauty and, and, and it looks nice. But I'm happy that the, the zoning does allow for bonus amenities. And there's a lot. Art is one of the choices. I gravitated towards art because I'm a big fan. And um, but you can do other things like a fountain. You can do um, a, a public arcade. You can do and there's maybe six or seven different things that would qualify you for uh, bonuses. Uh, so art being one of them. So this building is the way we've designed it. Doesn't have a big spot and it and it's a row housing. I mean it's it's sideline to sideline is other buildings so there's there's no real place to paint anything and the zoning also requires that you have 75 percent glass so there's no real place for a mural on this building i thought about a statue or something that would uh, protrude off of the building like a gargoyle or you know but um i wasn't feeling any of those and the yankee doodle garage has already implemented this light and with the holiday lights that the wall street neighborhood association and other building owners uh, put up, it, it looks great. And to have it more permanent, I think is cool, right? You have, you have to have lots of different mediums, I feel like. So uh, there's a, Arc Electric has some some light displays year round he, that he does uh, in his windows. And um, the Yankee Doodle Garage looks awesome. They, ha they, they have the ability to change those colors. So I, I submitted a picture with the red and the green. Um, oh, that's the picture of the the lighting I would do that those come in a variety of colors so you can, with an app on your phone you can change the lighting you can change it for you know Halloween to make it orange you can you can um do red white and blue you can do you know Christmas theme do you have that Sabrina do you have the picture of the Yankee Doodle Garage that I shared you give me one sec okay yeah, so the DP um you know the DPW essentially under Kathy Hubert if everybody knows did a public art installation on the Yankee Doodle Garage of, of colored lighting and it's and it's pretty attractive. When you're all the way down by the Sono Mall, you can almost see it in the distance as you're going down Wall Street. Um, yeah, so that was a picture I snapped the other night. Uh, tonight I was over there and it, it's different. They, did, they didn't have the red and green anymore. They just had, they had the, like a kind of the light across the top going, it, it's, it's definitely adds some character uh, to that, that the garages, which was not that attractive. And so the lights that we're going for would be much softer, more like a glow. It would splash against the building. It would I mean, you'd better, better be able to see the building. And we're designing that building in keeping with the neighborhood. And one of my uh, reasons I love Wall Street is the historical charm and the character of the neighborhood, which is also, you know, as much as it's a blessing and it's, it's a desirable feature of the neighborhood, it's a huge curse. Because as much as you want to preserve the history, there's two things that go with that. One, not all old buildings are worth preserving. A lot of times people have bastardized it over time. But the sheer cost involved with building with the old uh, materials is expensive. And then those historic buildings don't meet modern code for fire and safety and handicap. And so it's, it's very expensive endeavors. And sometimes you can't retrofit everything. There's some relief on some of the things, but you end up with potentially less safe buildings, um, but also cost prohibitive. So any relief you can get on cost to preserve the history would be great. And the opposite happens, and I don't want to go on a tangent about zoning, but I, I'd like to get zoning to come around more. You know, they, they have the ideas and, and the will uh, and the desire to, to do some things, but they, they don't uh, all work together. There's too many people working against each other, right? So you have historic saying, let's preserve it. You have zoning saying, we'd like to do it. But the way they want to do it, it's they sort of hoard it and they, they make you earn it. So 
the historic buildings, uh, you can't provide any parking either. That's the other thing. There's no parking on Wall Street. So uh, the, hopefully they can find a way to not require parking if you're if you keep one of these old buildings. You know, in order to provide. Go ahead. Sorry to interrupt you. Let's get back to the article. Yeah, sorry, I'm not, I, I get off on tangent. So. I agree with you completely on everything you're saying. Unfortunately, generally, I do. I thank, to... thank you for keeping you know, cracking the whip. I, I can go on. So, as far as the art, so go ahead. Would you rather have a question or? I want to just uh, I want to just point out an observation. One is that I do recognize that the uh, there is a precedent for lighting as part. So I mean that's clear. We have the Inkydoodle Garage. So I um, mean that is a public art installation. So I think lighting is completely viable as art. As art. Uh, that's one thing. And the second thing is that um, I know from just speaking as myself, as for neighborhood, anything you can do to light up the neighborhood and bring attention to the art is also very attractive and also proven as it's an increased safety and so on and so forth. So I'm, I'm all for lighting uh, as art in general. Um, is there anything else about the art Yes. We're, we're not here to really vote on this zoning. Unless... I know. I'm sorry. So, and and I'll, I'll tighten it up. And 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 good for you for 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 focusing me. So this building sits at the very end of River Street. So if you drive down River Street, you would run directly into this building, which it's on River Street that the uh, Yankee Doodle Garage is at. So and as you know, the Neighborhood Association has plans and already does you know music events, live music events that that you've helped coordinate on River Street. And there's kind of a park there. And, and I think as, as the head of river with this not aggressive lighting, it's, you know, it's, it's, it'll be bright. You'll be able to see the architectural features even at night and it'll be like some nice color, but it won't be blinding at all. It, you know, it'll, it'll just add to it for, for sure. And, you know, it's, it's up lighting. So even plain up lighting without the ability to do color, I think is nice. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's hey, what's the address there, please? 51 wall street. Um, does anybody is anybody unfamiliar with that area? Does anybody need a picture? Might be helpful to call it up, Mark. Okay. J Jason, is there a requirement as to how often it has to be lit up? Is it like every night it has to be lit up, or you no? Know? I I think I I think that would be a, a shame. I think it will be lit every night, and and it, um, if but it has the ability to turn off, and the, the colors would be um, we could potentially take requests. We could have ideas. It, it has the ability to, to do a wide range of color. Um, so it's not, but I would, I would think most nights we would have it lit up. You guys see this? Yeah. So this is the, this is it. And uh, it's, uh, so this is where Cafe Roma is. You see my mouse at the head of Isaac Street and River Street is the street that comes down and well, everybody clear on that on the location? My only concern with this is that oftentimes when people bring presentations, I, I feel like I'm more of a visual person. And so usually they, you know, have either a workup or, you know, Photoshop or something that would just kind of show us what it is that their intentions are. <laughs> Jason, do you want to email me quick a rendering and I can bring it up on the screen? I'm way ahead of you. I just texted it to you. Do you want me to email it? Yeah, email it, please, because then I can just share my screen. I want to just, uh, I want to just, um, not to, not to advocate for this particular project, although I, I do like it. I want to just speak about, so you guys know at the art park, I don't know if you guys saw, but, uh, a couple of months ago, we had a driver drive through one of the billboard art art pieces. It was actually Bob's, Bob Armiola's guy, drunk, probably drunken driver. He drove right through it. And um, we saw it on video, it was quite dramatic. And I just want to give credit to Jason because he had his crew out there the very next day rebuilding this structure and it was, it was fixed where you look at it now, you would never know that that happened and that was fixed within three days. Yeah, he did a, he did a perfect job. Do because I, I think when it comes to, the thing is about this type of installation, and I can speak about this with Yankee Doodle Garage, 
The Yankee Doodle Garage installation has some technical problems. I don't know if you guys are aware of that. They have some parts of the Yankee Doodle lighting uh, display that is not functioning. Kathy Hebert was working on getting that repaired through her, you know, her job. And, and it was like, oh, there's a loose going on. I just wanted to, to me, when you do a public art installation, there has to be a maintenance component. There has to be that understanding that there's a commitment to making sure that it's always maintained and, and working. And, and I want to say just for, in terms of this, I do have faith that this will be attractive and I believe that it will be maintained. And I'm basing that, that's why I wanted to relate that other thing that happened because, you know, sometimes things happen and then you have this situation that stays for months and you're waiting for it to get repaired. And uh, so I just wanted to speak for that. Jason, just for clarification, um, how many of those lights would you install? Is there two, three, one? So I'm, I no, it's more than that. It's I, I think it's at least four. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think it's at least four. So, and then the top floor that's here is the extra story that would be added. Not that correct. that's first. Yes. Yes. That, well, yeah, yeah, it would. And so here, here's the thing, right? So I don't. I, and cut me off again, Mark, if I start straying, because I, I can easily do that. This is one version of the plans we've looked at. Uh, it's the third version. The first version tried to keep the stucco 60s, 70s style that was there, right? It was, I, I personally think the building's disgusting, right? I, I hated it and it was rounded edges and, and that stucco is not historic in the slightest, right? So, you know, it's been there a while that, that David Harvey, I, you know, I've bought in jewelry there, um, but I didn't like it. So I went to the library and spoke to Ralph Bloom and he found some old pictures of the building from 1900. And, and that building was built in the late 1800s um so and that building was amazing it was a bank and it had these huge columns that were out in the sidewalk and there was stairs and like it, the whole grade was different because after the flood i think they raised the sidewalk but anyway that building had big columns so we're like all right maybe we'll put back the columns and we, we went down that road for a little while with my architect and it just didn't feel right it, it looked like we were inauthentic like we were faking it and uh i bring this up because this project is subject to third-party architect review. And uh, this is what I'd like to build. This is what my architect would like to build. We believe that the historic uh, stuff on the front was already removed completely. It's actually, if you go inside, you can see it's concrete block, um, just cinder blocks. However, the side walls and the back walls are brick. And I'm gonna try and keep some of that exposed brick on the inside and uh, keep some of the charm. But we thought, and, and this outside, my version, is full-size bricks, not the thin brick that everyone typically does and you end up having uh, issues with. This would be full-size masonry brick, which is definitely more expensive, but uh, we felt like would would be better fit with neighbors. So I say that because a rendering is only as good as the third part, party architect review. And there's a whole bunch of other layers, like Sabrina mentioned, you guys are talking about, is this art? Is it acceptable art? And then I'm gonna get uh, you know my butt kicked or I'm gonna get tossed around at least by a bunch of other committees, um, which is my least favorite thing in the world to do. Um, and of committees, I'd probably say you're my favorite committee, even though I don't like committees. See, the challenge for us is that we're all visual, generally visual people. So yeah, we I, I am it too, actually. And we understand that you know it's not an exact drawing, but it also does doesn't represent how the art component would look. So I think that would be the challenge for people. Um, like I say, I'm very comfortable with art as lighting. I mean, lighting as art. Um, but I think that might be the challenge for people is. Uh, well, and I think, and this is fairly new too. So I appreciate the um, uh, testimonial on the, the upkeep. And, you know, I have a a crew of repair people we have we have 38 buildings around town so we're constantly fixing stuff and you know we try and be as responsive as possible i will be pissed at myself if it doesn't turn i'll replace the lights it, these lights are fairly expensive but not like it's not like you're building it out of uh gold and 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 it's permanently set in granite it's a fact fixed to the building and if it turns out they're awful 
or they don't work properly and we have to go with a different brand or maybe they're warranty like you know a bulb's going to burn out from time to time and like you said the yankee doodle did have a quite a bit of problems and what's funny uh, or not funny um we use the same electrician a lot of times that the yankee doodle did to install those so he told me some of the pitfalls that they they, they were up against and um that's why we're not going at those string lights these are bulbs that'll shine up instead of the um uh, the long strings, you know, the, the long strings allow you to do a few different things with them, but I, I don't want blinking stuff or like, you know, I don't want it to be too distracting. I think the nice glow is enough. Um, but again, I think the question you have to answer is, is it artistic? Is it, is it going to help the neighbor? Is it worthwhile? Uh, I don't think it's going to be the most prominent artistic display that we put on in Norwalk, but I also don't think this building calls for that. Right. I think the, the building will speak for itself. It's going to be a huge improvement to the neighborhood. And uh, that top floor, I hope to put my office, actually. And I will love to be able to look um, down River Street. Maybe I can have the commission over. You can have a meeting on that terrace there that I hope to build. All right. We're, we're running short on time. So yeah. um, can I um, can I I was going to jump in quickly and no, no, um, I, don't, that's what I just wanted to say I was going to ask. Did anybody have anybody questions or recommendations? Got it. Um, we don't have to vote on this, right? We do need to vote on it, oh, but I want to make sure that everybody, all the observations we've made and all the questions have been answered. I have, a, I, before we vote, I encourage the um, Arts Commission to ask Jason to come back to the next meeting with the following items before we vote. I would like to see a night rendering so I would like to see the proposal of what this would look like during the day, what it would look like during the night. I would like to also see a maintenance schedule. I would like to see the specifications of what you'd like installed, why you need that additional story. So I would like all of these things lined out before any of us vote on anything. Then well, that's what I propose. It's really not a consideration for us. This is like, I'm not disagreeing with you, but um, it's not a consideration for us on the extra story. That's a zoning issue. That has nothing to do with us. We are we are only discussing lighting as artwork. It's uh, just just to be clear, because uh, you know we're not zoning. That's a zoning issue as far as the story goes. We're not. Okay. Now, where is the light coming, coming from? from? See any of all of those above items? So is that Janet talking? Yeah, so um, thank you. So I just want to be clear that what uh, Jason is asking the commission to do and what, um, what is there, are you asking us to just vote on this lighting installation as an artwork for the city or as public art? Uh, is that what um, we're being asked to do? Yes, yes, let's because uh, uh, so two things. It's is the exterior lighting of a building is that is that artistic and is that considered art that you would approve as a commission that's that and then as far as the maintenance that's probably another issue and there's another enforcement arm and um you know your questions are very fair and but it, they're also the reason i hate committees uh you know i i like to work very quickly i make fast decisions but i don't feel like anything's permanent and i will fix it and i'll make it better if it needs to be repaired or fixed so you know, this light I, I gravitated to, I thought it's the right use of public art for this building. But in, in all honesty, if that's the, the uh, hurdles I'm gonna have to jump over, I'm gonna abandon the public art component for this building, at least as a, as a bonus, right? And I'll, I'll either cut a story off and I'm already running into other roadblocks at zoning. And so I may not build the project, but you know, for tonight you're saying, is this art and we approve it as art. If I ultimately build this project, you'll, you'll have been the one of the pieces because I need two public amenities in order to get the extra height. It's not just the one. So Jason, my next question, um, so I got that, would be, would this art, this light art installation be just specifically for that building, you know, there? So, I mean, my, my concern is aesthetics, right? You know, the whole lead in, lead out. And I mean, is this the only building there that would have this light? aesthetic or would the other buildings around it also be part of um, a light art installation to enhance 
again the you know how it the the whole block and how it how yeah it yeah so great points and great questions and I am on the board of the Wall Street Neighborhood Association and lighting up the street we're we're hoping to have better lamp posts there's right now there's highway lighting that's there on most of the street part of the street is going to get the fancy lamp posts that are down in Sono and in other areas of town so for starters it would be this but there are other building owners including myself that are putting other types of lighting somewhat more temporary you know for holidays but i know that nance the mcguires for example at 64 wall street are looking at doing some permanent stuff so we can't and i can't force property owners that i don't own to put light on their building uh and i don't know that as a city you can enforce them to do any light but of course we'll encourage people and and we'll set the tone and the you know it's like a broken window theory in reverse like the more positive things we do the more positive things other people do and i can tell you for an example the holiday lighting which is now i think in the third year this is double and triple and the city and the first taxing district got behind it they planted evergreens they they really went uh to town and sabrina and um jessica and economic development and and the tourism they put wreaths and they put these planters with some um, ever type of green plants in them with lights in them. I mean, so Wall Street still has room to improve for sure. But this year during the house season was amazing. And, and thanks to Brina for, for doing that. So this is a start. This is a small building. It's only 30 feet, I think, wide. and But it does sit right at the end of the road. So it will give you a nice feel as you come down river. As If you're zipping down Wall Street at 30 miles an hour and you have a green light, you might give it a glancing look, but hopefully there'll be more people walking out there. I, you know, I hope that you'll be proud. And I give you my word, if as a commission, you don't like it and you have advice on how we do it, or you have advice on colors or, you know, I'm all ears. This is not like, like I said, built out of granite. It's, um, and it's, if, if something happens in the neighborhood that, that calls for a, a, a changing this, it's, it's no problem. I can tell you, these lights are going to be, between five and ten thousand dollars, all in, I would say. The building's a million eight in renovation. So, is the public art? You know, is, if you compare it all, it's 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 making some amendments to it down the road. If, if that's what it's called for, I, I'm not opposed to. But I am opposed to going to a lots of public meetings. You know, I, I I don't mind talking to you folks. I would much prefer in a in a non formal setting. Uh, but once a month. I mean, I would have this building a quarter way built in a month if, if I had to go green light today. I mean, I, I'm like chomping at the bit. I want to go. So um, this is a small, small piece, an important piece, but but I'm most interested in in going forward. I would I would take away the story before I would want to come back for another month. White can be the primary light too, right? It doesn't have yeah, to be. Yeah, totally. I mean, so yeah. aesthetically, I mean, outdoor lighting enhances buildings. There's a lot of beautiful buildings that are lit up you know just with a with a white so up lighting is awesome yeah no I, so, I love the idea i'm down here um in harbor point in in the building the beacon has lighting up top and it's beautiful the way they do it so can That's I, I i want to jump in back from where i was trying to jump in before um i definitely i commend jason on really pushing um public art and all these things and things have already been said um i think he's really drawn a lot of attention to it really important. I also really appreciate that he is working to include public art into, um, you know, some, a project like this, where I start to pull away from wanting to approve this as art is I just, you're not, you're not hiring an artist and I don't really see a way in which you're supporting the arts community by simply installing uplights in your building. It's awesome to install uplights in building. I agree. It's amazing. Um, and to light up the building, but I mean, uh, Sandy Garnett, as an example, has been using light. And you know Sandy. I know you know Sandy. Um, so why are you not asking an artist to help you with this rather than just go and shop this company and stick some uplight in your building? I don't necessarily consider that to be pushing the arts you know, agenda, so to speak, forward. Um, so can you speak to that? Sure. Fair point. And I, I touched on a little bit. You know, can I get credit for the 80 other pieces of art? I mean, I can't fit any other art on here. I thought about a statute. I don't really have room. I could put no, it no, on the not, sidewalk. Right? My, my I would love to, to hire an artist paint, to do You should paint the front of it. My, my right. point is that, you know, lighting, as Mark has already mentioned, lighting has been, the precedent for lighting as art has been set 
not just in Norwalk, but also like all over the world. So with that said, why not hire an artist to, you know, to actually do something artful rather than just put up lights on a building? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that your public art component needs to be a statue. No, no, I'm or, sorry. And I, got, I, I don't mean to be snarky either. So the, it's a fair point. I would say this, each building should be looked at independently. You're saying, is it artistic? Yes or no. And are you comfortable with it, it, it being artistic? It doesn't mean that that's the only hurdle and that's the, that's the right application for every building. You know, I may be coming to you again for, for this. And, and by the way, this is an opportunity for you to say, yes, we, we, we approve of this art. The other stuff and all the art I do on my private property, I do not need to come to you, which I very much appreciate. I, I know for a fact that you don't all like all of the art that we've done. I know that most of you like some of it. And I know that um, a lot of people love some of it. Um, but that's the great thing about art, freedom of expression, freedom of speech, right? You can have different viewpoints. And even on the commission, I bet you have differing viewpoints on which art is, is your taste. So I'm not, you know, I don't want to really debate that. And I, I would agree with you. And my first choice was to try and find another way to include art. This was the fallback. I, on the upper story, I have the ability to add some other artistic component, right? They would be hiring an artist. And just so you know, my architect, Weberson works for my architect. Weberson owns the Mad Lab. Weberson is a tenant of mine. He and I were trying to come up with the best, some other ideas. And I have other buildings. I have one other building I'm closing on tomorrow on Isaac Street that we've talked about doing a whole four story mural on. So I, you know, depending upon how easy it is to, to, to do this and get through this, I would consider doing it again. And I think other people will as well. So it's a fair point. This is probably like the bare minimum art, I would say that, that you might approve and th there could be much, much more. And I'm not trying to do the bare minimum, um, but for this application, I am, you know, I would do this lighting and consider this lighting if I didn't get the extra story. You know, I could get the extra story other ways. You know, I, I just, um, I'm hoping that you can see that it is artistic and the more art you add to the city, the better. I don't think it handcuffs you and say like, now people are gonna just abuse this process. This is new anyway, right? I would, this is Melissa. I would like to call for a motion to table this pender, pending a rendering because I feel like we do not have enough information for us to take this to a vote. So can I just speak to that real quick before you vote on that? Do you want me to hire an artist to paint a rendering? I, I you know, I don't know how you want me. You I don't, don't have to do that, but you can provide anything through Photoshop. We've had a number of people who will pr bring presentations to us. And if we don't have an, if we don't understand exactly what it's gonna look like and things, we'll ask them the same thing and ask them to come back with more information and they'll just bring us a Photoshop or something. I mean, you can sketch it however you wanna do it. Here's the you problem. I don't have the building approved, right? I showed you that thing, you asked for it. That's what I'd like to do right now. I have to hire a third party architect review. I have to go through redevelopment and I have to go through zoning. I'm you not saying it has to be a professional Rendering, I'm saying I, I just want on? something that shows me a little more visualization of what it is that you're proposing because I don't understand what it is that you're looking to do. So, and I need that before we vote. Can you put the, the picture of the uh, the building up there? Just talking oh, through it is, um, is not enough. I, I need you to draw something on another picture and say, this is what it currently looks like. This is what I'm planning to do. But the building right now, is that's there is I is, see zero is, lights on this correct this is one idea I do not have this approved I don't have this height approved I don't have this facade approved I don't have any of this approved so right but you, whenever you go to any commission you say this is what I'm looking to do and you have new floor plans or you have new renderings and this is not something that has lights on it so I need I would like a motion to table this until we do have full information and full rendering. So Can I'm I not willing to do it, please? unfortunately. Tabling on, I'm really just sorry. say no, just vote no. Would, would it, Melissa, if, if, if that one rendering had um, kind of how Jason visualizes the lighting, would that, would that suffice for you? 
Hey, remember when we did right, the Greek? So Jason, I'll work with you. I'll do it for you. Remember, right. remember when we did the Greek park and everyone said, you know, we don't have enough information. And that's why I said, you know, we definitely need a, a new rendering. And we went ahead and voted on it. And then when we voted, we approved it. But then there was a problem because they came back the next week with renderings. And y'all are like, oh, but we don't like this. We're like, we already voted on it. So then we were stuck with what we had in the park. So what I'm asking is that we don't approve anything until we have full renderings. How about this? There's How no about lighting this? on there. Go back to the, Serena, can you pull up the one with the lighting? Right, but that's that's not an image of your building. That's an image no, of a totally neither, different neither building. No, is the other building. I don't, the building that's there is the David Harvey building. I know, you, you said in a perfect world, that's what, the rendering is what you want it to look like. So in a perfect world, what's your lighting gonna look like? But see, well, this to me by is the not way, art. This to me is, is just lighting, just regular standard lighting you put on a building. Okay. So, so explain to me how this vote, is no. public art. I, don't make me come back with more renderings if, you, if that's the way you well, feel. Well, that's what I want you to do. No, that's what she wants you to do. Well, want me to do what? So no. I would like for you to come back with more information so that way I can uh, know what I'm voting for. I know. But if that's your true feelings, that, that this doesn't seem like art, me doing a rendering may or it probably won't change that. And if I come back with a rendering and then you vote no based upon your preconceived notion of it, you can just vote no now. I mean, that's the way I see it. I, I'm not coming back. So you guys can vote on it. If you vote no, so be it. Phil, I'd like to make a suggestion. We have a motion to table on uh, that. So um, are there any other motions? I'd, I'd like to make a motion that um, the commission uh, table this to just discuss art, I mean, lighting, um, just the whole idea of lighting as uh, as an art piece on on you know lighting on a building. I mean I don't I mean, and how that fits into our how that fits into our framework and what we have structured as public art and and how how it relates. I think the commission. Um, I'd like to just suggest that we table it and that the the voting members, the commission itself, comes you know go back and review our uh, criteria on um, on lighting as public art and then how we might want to proceed with this voting and what we might and and then discuss um, the aspects that Melissa is is asking for at this time. I I think you know. Do you not see art lighting? I'm just asking, do you not see lighting as public art? Uh, I think we have precedence though with the parking garage on Isaac Street and then the sign down in Sono as using light as art. So that's precedence. The only difference is, I don't know if it's going to be an office building, what you're planning on doing, Jason, or if it's going to be retail. That's the only difference is it's a different type of architecture opposed to the parking garage. I mean, but the precedence is there as lighting as art already in town. You have the Sono sign and then you have the parking garage. So it's a matter of trying to process it. Like I'm a, I'm a very visual person. So I'm trying to sit here and process what it's gonna look like and how it's gonna affect the neighborhood. And if, if but that's not us. I mean, if it's art, it's art. And then if the neighbors don't like it, they're gonna- Right, they have another, they have another they opportunity. Really <laughs> By the way, you might approve this as art, and it could get knocked down so right somewhere else. So, you know, I, I, I know I appreciate all of your opinions and, and uh, like all of you are raising fair points. I mean, I can't disagree with them at all. What the problem is, whenever you ask a big group of people anything, I have to go to a lot of other big groups of people for all of this stuff. It drives me crazy. You know, sometimes it, it, it helps you find your way. This is pretty simple though. It's like a very low hurdle. We want more public art. Is, is is colorful lights on your structure artistic and enough of an artistic to you say, yeah, we approve this as public art. That's what you're doing. That's all you're doing. You know, and I'm open to your criticism and your help on picking what colors to put there. You know, I'm showing you the type of lights. The light that's gonna be cast there is gonna be that that low hue. It's not gonna be the bright chain lighting. It's gonna it's gonna cast a wider amount of light to see the building. And those are just two colors. It was purple and green. I have the ability to do red, white, dark, violet, uh, yellow, orange. So 
Brown, I think. I mean, I, so you can run through all your imagination on what the, some of you might like some of the colors and not the others. The idea is, is this art, you know, yes or no? If you don't think it is, I can live with that. And maybe I'll come back to you with some other type of art. Maybe I won't. Maybe I, maybe I won't build this thing. You know, I, I honestly, I, I got an email today from zoning that was very disheartening. And um, I, it's not your, your issue, but you know, well, I, I'm sorry. To clarify exactly what we're voting on. What, what is, are we voting that light is, his light is art? We voted on him, the, 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 his potential light fixture that he's put in on the building. Hold on, I'm going to get to, I'm going to get to your motion. There's an active motion on the floor, which we have to, we, we have to get to, but the reality is we are out of time. So we're going to, I mean, at this point, unless we're ready to vote to approve, then we should vote to the table until the next meeting. Because at this point, we have no more time. So um, we do have an active motion on the floor. I mean, essentially, you guys have two motions, but you basically have made the same motion. Um, so uh, having said that, it, are you seconding each other's motion? Because right now we have two, two individual motions with no second. What was the individual motion? motion table, and what else is out of the motion? Motion to approve? No, Melissa made the motion to table. So you have to vote on the motion to table that Melissa just put and then Janet seconded. So now you have to vote on tabling. So this was the table pending a rendering that shows what it would look like, correct? Jason, do you need a you need a answer now? Like you can't wait another month, right? I don't want to wait another month. I will redirect my energies. Is one of the things. And here's the problem: I have never installed these lights. There's lots of variations. I have a tenant who is a master at lighting, Gene Morale. He's the technical director at the Wall Street Theater. He's installed lights, million dollar installations in clubs with smoke and everything else. You know, I'm gonna get lights that look nice and provide that. Um, shade on the building that's the idea it's colorful up lighting that you can change the color on the building that i will build i don't know a building i'm gonna build i have a idea that i'm going to get pushed around and i'm gonna to have to change what i've done so putting someone's idea of what the light might look on my current rendering is a complete guess right like how do we know how Jason, bright it why be? don't you come back with when you're at the final stage then when you have because at the final stage of, of getting approved, I can't go to zoning. All of this costs thousands of dollars to do these plans, to, to design all of the mechanicals and the elevators and all of these things that I have to go for site plans and I have to go to zoning and I have to go to third party architect review and I have to go to redevelopment with. Like all of that stuff is going, think of how you want information and they're gonna wanna put their input and they're not gonna approve without changes. So it's like all of these steps along the way it's like a ball of clay that everyone's going to whack at and try and mold. And when you try and design a horse by committee, you end up with a camel, which is one of my biggest fears. I thought this would be easy. I, I understand and appreciate your concerns and the fact that you may have not done this before. So I don't want to make you uncomfortable. I, I don't. I, I do. I wish that you would say the, 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 the lighting is artistic and we think it's public art. Okay. And I don't think that you're setting yourself up for <laughs> ruin. It's not like there's a line of people hoping to dump a million eight into a building on Wall Street. There's just not. And and the, you're the you're the ticket. You know, people could pick one of the other seven criteria to get to five stories, um, or not. Yeah. It's so, it's not it's not that it's not that monumental, right? It's and it's it's not. Um, I mean, even if you approve it, I could decide to put a, a, a disgusting puke green color every night and it would make you all annoyed, right? I, hopefully there's a good, some good faith involved that, that we and I care about this neighborhood and I do care about yours and the neighborhood's input. You know, um, it, it was supposed to be, and what Sabrina, I thought, summed it up nicely. Maybe you could say that again, what you're actually voting on. The other things were kind of going, veering into other people's lanes on, on design and height and and I'm, I'm going to have an opportunity to get those people to weigh in on that. Well, I'm going to vote yes, as because we have precedence as light as art in mm -hmm. other installations. Sorry, we have to vote on the oh. table on the floor. Okay. 
I'm going to abstain from tabling it because I, I I have my decision. <laughs> I'm going to vote no on tabling it. I like to kind of pass this through now. I don't I don't see what all the the riffraff is about. It's it's helping beautify our city and it's it light is or that's that's not a matter of contention. So I'm going to vote no on tabling it. I would like to push it through now. I agree with that. I vote no on tabling it, and I'd like to get this approved through. I would, I would like for us to go back, and um, Nori talked about the precedent for um, lighting uh, as art. I would like for us to go back and review what those um, parameters and what, what, what those are for the Arts Commission. I mean, I wasn't there. I don't remember voting on, um, hold on a second. Did somebody- so you, you, you didn't vote on it. I can put this light with or without you, by the way. I can put this on all my buildings or none of my buildings. That's not the question. I mean, this is, this is the point. And I think some like, I mean, your, your true colors are showing a little bit, Jason. You're saying, well, if I can't get it done this way, well, then forget you guys. No, um, right. Of you're, not, you're not willing to engage in the conversation about, about you know, how to make this into art, something that, that pushes the arts but community Brian, I can forward. paint this building without your permission. I can put a sculpture there without your permission. I can put lighting there without your permission. I'm coming to you. I want to finish what I was saying. I don't remember the Arts Commission voting, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't remember the Arts Commission voting on the light installation for the for the um, the parking building down there did, on, on River Street. I don't That's remember, what I was answering. I you did not vote on it. Janet, the only reason that we're voting on it is because the Zoning Commission needs that in order for them to consider it even as a public amenity for his project. So our vote then goes to the Zoning Commission right. to say, yes, the Arts Commission has said that this is public art. And then they vote if they're counting that as an amenity for him to get the bonus floor. So we're not voting on amenity at all. We're just, we're basically just sending it on to zoning. Yeah, we're saying if this is acceptable as art or not, period. Period. And, and Melissa he, he, made the motion to table it to get a rendering on the building to see what it would look like. Janet seconded it and then Emerson said no, Nori said no, and Bob said no. So we have to finish out that. And then if it's no, then it moves to the full vote. And then we vote yes and no per usual. Yeah, I vote. I'm going to, I'm going to, who, who else has not voted? Matt, Kadeem, Brian, and yourself, Mark. Right. I vote yes on table. I'm going to abstain from tabling. I'm, I, I, myself personally, I am completely comfortable with artistic lighting and I would have no problem advancing this onto zoning from this point. Um, but if you guys need more time to consider it, I fully respect that and understand it. Oh, and Sabrina, I abstained from it. I didn't vote no, I said I'm abstaining. Okay, we still just need Kadeem and Matt, because right now you guys will break, you know, either tabling it or moving forward at this point, because we have two abstentions, two no's, and three yeses. Sabrina, you there? Yep. So I'm voting today on approving it so it can go to zoning. As if it's- You're voting right, right now, this vote is to either table it to the next meeting or not. I'm just confused because if if you can do whatever it is that you need to do, then what is the point of us even bringing this motion on the table? That's what I'm if trying to you, bring up. Because we're voting if this is acceptable art, period. Because if we say yes, the zoning commission can then potentially allow it as a public amenity for Jason to get a, a floor bonus. If but we say no, the zoning commission then needs to vote with a supermajority in order to overturn us to say that Jason can get the floor amenity bonus. But 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 hold on, Sabrina. hold on, Sabrina. Um, Kadeem, the, the, the motion now is whether we're going to table it because that's right. right? So, we're gonna, so we Sorry. there are enough knows that we're going to table it, and we can have a full. We can have, you can Kadeem or anybody can make a motion to approve, but we have to 
we have to vote on this motion first. Which is right, my motion, my motion is I'm, I'm asking to table right now because I don't feel there's enough information for my it. Motion, my motion is to table, 100%. Okay. Um, I'll, I'm going to vote uh, yes for tabling. The motion passes five approvals, two denials, and two abstentions. So it's tabled. So Jason, would you be willing to come back with a with a rendering for us to make a full vote next month? Um, I, I'm not going to commit to that. I'm not sure. I pr probably not. Uh, I I think that the bigger issue is this is new to you, and I think you've misunderstood the kind of what you're doing. I mean. There's lots of different public art, um, and you're the arbiters of what art is. Uh, you know, and this I isn't new to us. This is Melissa. This is not new to us. When we even do this traffic graphics that you saw going through a minute ago, we have an approval process, and that that's includes different. a rendering of what it's going to look like. And no, that's that is very I'm different. That is very, very that's different than what you're proving tonight. It is because you're, just you're approving for public art to be approved as public art your art to be approved and there's not full renderings that's all no, I'm, saying. I'm not the, let me explain the difference when they're coming to you and saying is this installation acceptable you're weighing on the content also not whether or not it's public art right public art can be disgusting you could hate it but it's still art but we're looking at your whole piece as if it is approved to be public art right that that's and you're an effectively easy question showing to us nothing that's that it's exactly like looking correct. at a blank canvas and saying a paint saying okay i i want that painting when there's there's nothing to see and you're also and that's what, that's the point you can made. make it whatever color you want which yes. i have a problem with because then that's not telling us that's public art that's your art presented to the public i i i built 80 <laughs> pieces of <laughs> i've been 80 pieces of public art without any of your approval it's public art. Would anyone would you say that those pieces aren't public art? There, there's art installations that use light and the colors can be any color that the artist wants. So the public's not going to decide on what color, but the concept is is lighting art. And I think that's what Jason's trying to bring in, in front of us. Um, I understand it clearly. It's just in, in concept is lighting an art form. Yes or no? Right, and also there's different degrees. Like you could have a light show. That's not something that would probably be more artistic and less appropriate. We we tabled it, so I don't know yeah, what else we're voted going on about. So it's tabled. I get it. I mean, you you might, it, it might as well have just canceled. Gotta go to the next next meeting. All right, let me know what you decide next meeting. Okay, um, Sabrina, is there any? Is there? Right, we're motion to table now at this point, correct? Yeah, it tabled the item, so you move on to the next item, which is um, old business. Right. We're 30 minutes over, is that okay as far as Zoom goes? Yeah, you're okay. Okay. Um, let me look at... Did, Hold on. Mark, could I just jump in and say real quick, I, I'm sorry I was late. I think I confused myself by scheduling the infrastructure meetings for 630 because I thought this meeting was at 6, 630, not 6 o'clock. But so I missed my, my committee report for the infrastructure committee. So I don't know if you or anyone else brought that to the table or not. Um, I mean, I made the same mistake, Emerson. <laughs> yeah. It was a discussion. Uh, there was a discussion uh, of infrastructure. Um, as a matter of old business, if you have anything to add, I know you weren't here, but is there anything you want to impart that's this is a fine time? I was just gonna mention about how we had voted on the uh, the new, the update for the bylaws. And I guess that, that the, the process is that, that the commission, the whole entire commission has to vote on that the next meeting, correct? So I mean, we could have voted, it could have been introduced as a meeting uh, item for this meeting had you emailed in advance. Um, okay, no, I'm not sure on the time time constraints and that sort of thing. So I could just email that for the next meeting then, and that can be approved or not approved, whatever. Yeah, you just just send it to me and Maritza, or just send it to Mark, and he'll send it to us. As long as it's 24 hours in advance of the meeting, we can put it up. Oh, 24 hours. Okay, good to know. Yeah. Thank you. 
Um, yeah, so with, with any, and if you could note any changes that were made. Um, we so did, we, it's the, uh, the draft that uh, Sabrina had sent to me. I just moved it forward to approve it. Okay. Okay, yeah, so if you could email me that as written and we can uh, submit it on the agenda. Um, okay. Was there any other old business from anybody else in the commission? Okay, in that case, um, is there a motion to adjourn? I motion to adjourn, Brian Casper. I second, this is Melissa. Uh, okay, you second and uh, um, vote by name, please. Mark Allen, aye. Emerson Straniti, aye. Kadeem Danny Deven, aye. Nori Gruden, aye. Matthew O'Callaghan, aye. Bob Abriel, aye. Okay, thank you very much. The ayes carry, and I'll follow up with everybody by uh, by email. And thank you guys. <laughs>